today I'm going to be reacting to the makeup and costumes in Hunger Games. Hunger Games was one of the first movies that ever piqued my interest in avant-garde makeup and saw that there could be a world where I could do avant-garde makeup design for movies and film or TV. Before that, I just felt like if you wanted to go into the movie space, you always had to do special effects, gore, prosthetics, and all that stuff, and I've just never been really interested in those fields in particular. And if you've never seen my work before, hi, first of all, my name is Cindy. I am an avant-garde makeup artist, which means I create very high fashion makeup looks that are kind of like fine art or unconventional creative beauty. If you're interested in unconventional creative uses of makeup and really high fashion photo shoots, then make sure to subscribe to this channel because I do a lot of makeup challenges here, but I also hope to be doing more React videos. The reason I'll be looking at both the costume and the makeup design together, it's because they go hand in hand and a lot of my work has been very much inspired by couture directly. I need to give huge props to the costume designer and the makeup designer for Hunger Games because they did an incredible job. I've actually watched some analyses on the work that they did on all of the films and the choices behind it. So I do have a little bit of insight into what their thought processes were. All right, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, here we go. This is the first shot of Effie Trinket. Effie Trinket's the person who ends up announcing to District 12. The reaping is starting. It's somber. I love the colors that they chose. This has a very like John Galliano style. When John Galliano worked for Dior as a creative director for a couple of years, that's the first thing that I thought of. Old Hollywood with the very pale face. I believe with the capital, they don't have to work in the sun, they're always indoors. So it, like being pale is almost like privileged. The lips are done where it's just a little bit over here to enhance the cupid's bow and then the bottom, but then the rest of the lip is actually not touched. Like geisha as well. With the bleached eyebrows, it gives a very, almost like ominous look. It's, it's strange, very artificial. Everything about her is eccentric. She walks in with like the big, almost clownish hair. It's got this cotton candy pink to it and this flashy purple that contrasts against the grays and the greens of all the districts. Color symbolism is one of my favorite things to use when it comes to avant-garde makeup because avant-garde makeup is very conceptual. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Hunger Games. And may the odds be ever in your favor. Now that we see a little bit of a closer up to her face, you really can see that detail in the lip. Not only do you see this like velvety dark purple, meaning royalty, like purple is usually royalty, like that purple shade, you also see that she has gold, like on the insides of her lips. It's such a rich color scheme. Royalty and mystery is usually defined by the colors purple and gold together. A lot of cosmetic brands will use that. I studied color psychology when I was working for brand marketing. That was definitely a color scheme that I would intentionally use for certain things to evoke premium royalty. But the gold, I think, is kind of like a dark reminder of what a fight for greed this whole Hunger Games movie is about. One thing that I learned definitely from uh, being on camera all the time, being on TV as well, is that like everything gets very flat once you film it. That's why when I'm doing makeup for social media, I always make sure that contour or any of my pigments are like extra, extra pigmented. Look at those nails too. All right, this is the scene where they're entering the capital for the first time. That's incredible. And they've never seen it before. It's like this super rich dystopian bubble. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous shot. Okay, real quick, this sea of like the extras, like the sea of people of Pan Am, so beautiful. You just, you could look at every single person in there and find something interesting. The big headpieces, the exaggerated shoulders, this extremely long eyelashes, the gloves, the men, their beards are also colored or like shaped. And I think some of them have like beard wigs as well, which is a thing. I see a lot of also dark lips and I believe the bleached eyebrows and the dark lips, like a black offset to the sea of really deep colors is very, very interesting and very much like a message that like Pan Am or the capital is very wealthy, but it's like, blood money, you know, overconsumption, clown core couture. I want to point out that a lot of the colors I'm noticing that they're choosing are very jewel toned colors offset by very bright colors. If you imagine like a color wheel, 
the the deeper the colors are or the more saturated they are they're like closer to the outside okay the first girl here she's got those individual lashes i would assume those are kind of like very very thin strips of paper curled upwards and i don't know what's attached to the end it might be a feather it's hard to tell or it could potentially be just painted. That's great when you have like a very, like everything's about contrast, like I said. So this is really great to contrast that black hair and really big headpiece. You can see with the references of like the capital is a joke. It's all very clownish with the color. Almost looks like a clown. I think when you do like avant-garde or, or conceptual types of costuming and, and makeup, you try not to take things very literally. Like they could have done just clown, straight up clown. They were like, let me take elements that would be reminiscent of what a clown would wear, but insert it in a way that it would be wearable in their society. Oh, look at those eyelashes. They're peacock. Those are peacock feathers. They're wearing heels. Wow, there's so much going on. These people are, I guess, cosmetologists and then they're giving her a makeover so that she looks more like capital. And then everyone has like really, really, again, those deep colors in their wigs. That was one of the bravest things I've ever seen with your sister. My name is Sinner. Katniss. I'm sorry that this happened to you, and I'm here to help you in any way that I can. Gold eyeliner, gorgeous. Most people just congratulate me. Well, I don't see the point in that. So tonight, they have the tribute parade. Wow. That fur. I was wondering where I was going to see more fur. Wow. Look at that makeup. Over 100,000 people craning to get a glimpse of this year's tributes. And the sponsors get to see the tributes for the first time. The importance of this moment cannot be overstated. There they are, this year's tributes. <laughs> oh, the most exciting part. It's, uh, it just gives you goosebumps. And don't you love how the stylists, they so clearly are able to reflect the character of each district. Yeah. Right, right. There's District 4. Yes, the <laughs> fishing. I get it. I like it. That's very good. <laughs> Fire. Now see that I love that. Two young people holding their hands up saying, I'm proud I come from District 12. I love that. There was so much to unpack when it comes to like the makeup and the costumes, but you know, I was just really enjoying watching that. Makeup and clothing, like all of this is very symbolic. There's a reason that it's art because people can really get behind symbols. And here you just see like a sea of like little colorful dots. They look like little dipping dots, like ice cream. Love, love, love. A little unconventional color scheme here, but she's got that metallic, almost silver purple, which is a little more upscale. You got that peplum dress, which is when it goes out and then there's like a pencil skirt underneath it. And of course, Afri Trinket's always got that matching hair and headpiece. But they don't receive any special treatment. In fact, they stay in the exact same apartment as you do. And I don't think they let them have dessert. And you can. So how good are they? Obviously, they're pretty good. They win it almost every year, but... Oh, Peter's strong. What? He can throw a 100-pound sack of flour right over his head. I've seen it. Okay, well, I'm not gonna kill anybody with a sack of flour. She got, like, a light blue... I believe it's, like, eyeshadow or just, like, with a lip tint here. That's still in the same grain of that, like, super Cupid's bow. Still pale. I like the fact that the colors that they're choosing for Effie are very, like, in-between. It's, like, kind of baby pink sometimes, and it's kind of purpley other times. Everything is shiny about her. You, you were so in love with this boy that the thought of not being with him was unthinkable. You, you'd rather die than not be with him, you understand? It's the first time we've seen her wear teal or any color around her eyes in an eyeliner. They're truly trying to transform her into the capital. And I think at the wings of her eyeliner, they added a shape, which I couldn't really see properly. But that little pop of blue on the edge of the wings, 
really brings out the blue in her eyes. And as you can see at the end, she's kind of come into her own knowing how to play the part. And her hair is down, it's no longer up in braids anymore, so she's transformed like a butterfly. Okay guys, that's about it. So I do hope you guys enjoyed this react video. I had a lot of fun watching the Hunger Games again. There's three more Hunger Games movies, so if you would like me to react to them, let me know in the comments. If you want to see more of this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Smash that like button so that this video gets pushed out to more people who enjoy Hunger Games makeup and fashion. As usual, stay creative and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!